Hello, it's Roger Bisbee here from Skill Builder. Now we've recently discovered just how much our viewers like seeing real life projects. And to that end, we've got another one to show you, which is being done by my mate, Robin Clevert, who is a carpenter supreme and builder, and he always does great work. And we didn't actually catch him when he was actually doing any work at this point. He was in his civvies, if you like, but he assures us he's going to do some work and we're gonna go down and film him and follow the project. So here he is just giving you an overview and an introduction to the project. Hi, I'm Robin Clevert and We've got a really interesting project to show you. Take the first glass and steel house in the UK built in 1957 by an architect called Michael Newbury. This was his family home. It was revolutionary at the time. Structures like this had been built across parts of California, but they'd never been done in the UK. So he was a young architect in his 20s and he decided to find a plot of woodland and build himself a glass and steel house. It was a really simple design, a raft, four steel posts, one on each side, a ring beam around the top, and then all the walls were glass. There was no internal walls apart from a bathroom, which was right in the middle. Subsequently, it was sold, it was changed, and it was turned into a kind of a modern looking bungalow in the sort of 80s. So we're gonna take it now, and we're gonna completely refurbish it, paying homage to this whole concept of glass and steel, but not making it stereotypical like a new contemporary house which you see everywhere with anthracite windows and like a, a, a monocouche type render. So we're just going to show you the building. It's a square box effectively, single story and it's 11 meters square. So this is the house and although it looks nothing like what it did originally, you can see there's one of the steel posts and hidden behind that fascia board is the steel ring beam which used to be on show. And this corner is the only original glass. It's six mil plate glass, and it's joined on the corner with glazing clips. Now, considering it's built on clay with all these trees, it's amazing that that glass hasn't moved and broken over the years. However, the whole building was, was underpinned because the raft did fail. So we're extending it on three sides, and we're gonna build a garden room as well for sort of leisure facilities. And because of the trees and the clay, we decided to search out a foundation system which was gonna work and be economical and, and also work with the existing raft. So what we've got is we've got a piled raft situation here, which consists of nine meter deep, 300 mil concrete piles. We then suspend a new concrete raft over the top, which is cast in situ on a heave foundation material which, which protects, protects from heave. <clears throat> Simple system, dig it all out, 50 mil piling mat, the rig comes in, drills all the piles, the piles are poured, they have a week or two to go off, and then you put your drainage in, so you cut back through the piling mat, put your drainage in, so this is for a, bar this is for a couple of bathrooms for example, and then the next thing is tidy the piling mat up, repair it all just like we've done on the back, Simple shutter, goes all the way around. And there's a product here called Pecavoid, which is underneath, which is polystyrene with a plastic top. That supports the steelwork, ready for the concrete. So that is to stop any pressure on the foundation? Yeah, I mean, with um, wheeled clay or any clay, you get shrinkage and you get expansion. So in this case here, we've got a really quite solid clay, it's quite dry, and that's purely because of the trees and the lay of the land. So the whole site runs towards the road. So we don't get a lot of water collecting, but what you do get is you do get sloppy bits where you can dig down and it's a little bit wet. But apart from that, when they were drilling here, it was like dust that was coming out because the ground is so hard. But equally, if then it starts getting wet, it does expand and obviously pushes the slab up and it's, it could even break a slab. If you wanted to do a traditional strip foundation here, in proximity to these trees, some of these trees are less than three meters away, you'd be digging down two meters and the chances are you're gonna ruin the roots and kill the trees. So this is a really cost-effective solution to actually cover a lot of square meters. Virtually doubles the size of the footprint of the house. So at this end of the site, we're building the garden room and this is also in very close proximity to some really mature trees. So it, again, we, d we just couldn't use a strip foundation. So we've gone for the same system. But what's different here is we've also put in a pool. So 
we excavate the ground down to the right levels and then peck avoid underneath. Then there's insulation. We cast a slab on that now. And then we'll build the walls straight off of that. And that will form the corner of the building here, which is fully glazed. And then the rest of the building is built on this footprint, as you can see here. Timber framed, so it's being produced in a factory. Blue laminated roof. So uh, mainly the roof structure is all on show, the gables and then the intermediate gables that support the ridges. And everything apart from that is open for configuration later into smaller areas, for example, um, rest area and a small kitchenette and that sort of thing. The, um, the lucky thing here was there's no groundwater, so there's no groundwater present at all. A lot of time when you're excavating, especially we've gone down 2.4 metres from the original ground level here, so from this, from this level where I'm standing now, we've gone down 2.4, but we've not encompassed any groundwater at all, which is a bit, um, a bit lucky really, because when you're building a swimming pool, quite often, if you've got groundwater present, it's about keeping the pool in the ground, because the chances are the, the whole thing will just push itself out of the ground in the future. So how do you get over that? Well, in this case, because the piles are in the pool, so the pool piles go down another seven meters, and the raft and base of the pool is going to be cast over them. So there's six piles in the pool here, which actually hold it down. The other thing as well, believe it or not, is the raft on this extension, on this building, has been made thicker to accommodate the fact that it might even blow off. Because the building is quite lightweight, the building is anchored to the, to the raft. Okay, and so the raft needs to hold the building yeah, yeah. from yeah. wind loads. Who's making the timber frame building for you? Um, it's a company called Cartledge Timber Frame. A small family business, but they're really quite good at detail and um, very reliable. It's just a recommendation from um, one of my really good uh, pals. So you've, got a, you've, you've made a structural model of this, haven't you? Yeah, we have. We've got a model of the building. It was quite, it was quite difficult for me to... Um, take the plans and show my wife in this case exactly what what was what it was going to be like so what I thought was helpful is we'd build a model to scale showing all of the different areas and it's proved really helpful especially with the house because some of the room layouts Becky uh, my wife wasn't that keen on so we were able to actually rejig it and change the walls move them around at this stage and it's, it's been really quite helpful so we'll have a look at that so there we have it this is basically what happens. These, these, where the buildings join, the glass window is going to come up and wrap over the roof a metre. So that this bit and that bit look like they're subservient to the main house. Mm. Because the um, designer, she was keen on making sure the new extensions were kind of like paying compliment to the existing yeah, yeah, yeah. house if you know what I mean. So it was just a, a way of... Um... So that's staying. What's, so what's existing here? So this is the existing front door is still roughly in the same place. Yeah. Albeit the hall's just being adjusted and the door will be in the centre at the moment. It's sort of off centre. And then we... The existing front room is split to a study and then a, like a TV room in here and snug. So these are desks. You can see large desk and then there's a snug and then there's like a kitchen living dining here which goes through into a utility room and a boot room and a cloak room and there's like another door down to the garage from that side and then this is the main living area at the back so with a very big sofa like so and then this primarily on this side so that's all of this here faces south yeah. and the, the, the sun rises here and it comes over the top of the house so on this side on the north side is where the bedrooms are so we've got all of the bedrooms here so we've got bedroom 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 ensuite ensuite bathroom and this is like the boiler cupboard right in the middle of the room in the house so we can distribute all the heat in from roughly the centre of the building, really. 
So I hope you enjoyed that and Robin's going to be putting in the foundations next and we'll come back and see him there and then hopefully when the timber frame arrives and he starts constructing that we we'll get some view of that going on but it's tricky to catch him he tends to work without warning he just suddenly does something sometimes even at night and there it is all finished in the morning so we do our best to pin him down and to come back and catch him when he's actually doing some work I'm Roger Pisby, thanks very much for watching and come back soon and see us and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe, do what you can for us because we're trying to grow, we're trying to make this channel bigger and better and we need your help.